What's up, Wolverines? I'm Luis Martinez. And I'm Lucas Bogardis. And here's your news for today. As our final school week comes to an end and finals begin, our very own Matthew Bartiran takes a look at helpful tips on how to cope with anxiety and reviewing for a test. As we approach the end of the school year, Mrs. Gutierrez tells us some ways to alleviate stress to maximize performance and health for final exams. So with final exams coming up, a lot of times students feel a huge increase in anxiety and stress with the long hours of studying and the pressure that they might be putting on themselves or their parents might be placing on them to perform well on those exams. And it's very important while we're preparing for the final exams and you're going through all of the steps of studying and getting ready that you also take very good care of your emotional health because that's the key to success later on your exams. So a couple of things, a couple tips to remember when we're trying to beat those anxiety feelings or those stress feelings is to take good care of all of the regular basic things that we need to do, like trying to make sure we sleep enough hours. I know that's crazy time during finals, everyone stays up late studying, but it's really important to sleep. When you don't have enough hours of sleep, it really builds up and it interferes with your ability to think clearly and it makes you very irritable and it increases your anxiety. So in order to stay calm and to have your best chance of performing well, you do need to try to sleep as much as possible in the days before your tests. Eat well also, try to eat healthy food, nutritious food, that's well balanced meals, not a lot of junk food, not a lot of sweets and careful with the caffeine. You might need to have a little bit of coffee or cola or something to stay awake, but don't overdo it. All of that's gonna increase anxiety if you do it too much. So we wanna make sure that the eating and the sleeping is getting taken care of. She also goes on to give a couple of tips and tricks to help settle the nerves right before the test. Hold up your hand and just touch each of your five fingers. And every time you touch a finger, Breathe in and breathe out and go through that as many times as you need to. That's gonna help reset your brain. It's kind of like hitting control, alt, delete on your brain. It helps you start and get ready to take that test. The other great tip right before you take an exam, if you're feeling anxious, is to review the facts. Not the facts of the content for the test, but review the facts of I have studied for this. I put in the time and energy. I sat yesterday for so many hours. I sat in class and paid attention all these weeks. I am now gonna reap the benefits. And sometimes just going through that mental checklist will help your body and your mind settle down and remind yourself that you've got what it takes to do well on that exam. From WBLN, I'm Matthew Barturin. The Atlantic hurricane season, which officially began Wednesday, is wasting no time making itself known. A tropical storm watch has been placed for both east and west coasts of Florida. The forecast calls for the system to move across southern and central Florida on Saturday. Rainfall totals of 4 to 8 inches as are possible, but South Florida and the Keys could see a foot of rain in some areas. Flood warnings are already in effect as much as South Florida, including Miami. The potential cyclone, a term used to describe a disturbance that isn't yet a tropical storm, is brewing near Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. It is expected to become a tropical depression Friday before possibly hitting Florida on Saturday. President Biden addressing a nation scarred by gun violence yesterday evening, outlining the steps he believes Congress needs to take to address mass shootings in America. Lucas Bogardis has the latest. There are too many other schools, too many other everyday places that have become killing fields, battlefields here in America. As Americans struggle to grasp a lethal wave of mass shootings that are traumatizing communities and tearing lives apart. After Columbine, after Sandy Hook, after Charleston, after Orlando, after Las Vegas, after Parkland, nothing has been done. President Biden is calling out Congress to come together and work on bipartisan gun reform laws. This is not about taking away anyone's guns. It's about vilif not about vilifying gun, on gun owners. In fact, we believe we should be treating responsible gun owners as an example of how every gun owner should behave. The president laying out actions he believes need to be taken. And if we can't ban assault weapons, then we should raise the age to purchase them from 18 to 21. Strengthen background checks enact safe storage law and red flag laws, repeal the immunity that protects gun manufacturers from liability, address the mental health crisis. 
Mitch McConnell says he's hopeful and optimistic lawmakers can compromise on legislation to address mass shootings and to have ready to unveil when Senate returns to session next week. Mental, mental illness and school safety are what we need to target. Reporting for WBLN, I'm Lucas Bogardis. This week marks the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Midway, one of the most important naval battles in World War II. On Friday, the Friends of the National World War II Memorial will commemorate the anniversary with a special ceremony in Washington. It will include a wreath presentation at the World War II Memorial's Pacific Arc. The Battle of Midway took place in June of 1942 when the United States defeated an Atlantic fleet of the Imperial Japanese Navy near Midway Atoll. Japan has planned to invade the Hawaiian Islands start, starting at the Midway Island, but the U.S. cracked on the mission code to attack the Midway Coast. Japan four aircraft carriers and more than 200 planes and pilots the first clear victory for the United States. What's up Wolverines? I'm Jay Camille and here's your sports for today. Last night, your Miami Marlins won 3-0 against the San Francisco Giants with a Sandy Alcantara pitching 7 innings and having 8 strikeouts. The Fish play again tonight at 6.40. Speaking about the Fish, we go back to Matthew Barturn who got a chance to speak with alumni John Eric Alvarez, class of 2006 and the communication director of the Miami Marlins about the, his career and the team. Along with a fantastic tour of the Marlins facility, I was able to speak with John Eric Alvarez, class of 2006, who works as the Director of Communications for the Miami Marlins, and find out more about what he does. Uh, okay, so as the Director of the Communications for the Marlins, how do you operate every day, every week? How does that, how do you function? I think the cool thing is that every day is different. I mean, just like the team goes on the field and they have a different game every day. We come into the office and we don't know exactly what the day's going to present. We try to be as prepared as we can. We do our, our, our legwork so that we're up to date with anything taking place. Uh, I think what, what's very important nowadays with social, the growth of social media is making sure that we're ahead of or we're up to date on the stories taking place so that um, we can kind of carry that out with our players on the field or with our staff on the business side and just making sure that we're best positioned so that as the Miami Marlins organization, we can showcase to the community that we're here for them, that we're part of the community. As much as we are a baseball team that is looking to succeed on the field, we're an organization that's trying to succeed as a business in the community. So from being a Berlin graduate um, to now being here, what was kind of the journey of how you got from there to here? The journey is it's long and very difficult to get through just because a lot of people want to get a job in sports and that's one of the things I had to learn is kind of the first job doesn't come easy. There's a lot of volunteering, there's a lot of kind of sacrifice that you have to go through to get uh, your start in sports and I think Belen prepared me in that it takes a lot of hard work and commitment to get to showcase your abilities to people and you have to be willing to go the extra mile just to showcase that you're worth keeping it in the organization. I had to do one, two, I had to go through three different internships, non-paid, just to land my first paid internship, which was here with the Marlins back in 2011. And from there, it took me 14 months to really showcase why the Marlins should keep me as a full-time employee. and. Thankfully, it worked out for me, but it's just, it's not an easy journey. Um, as people get jobs fairly quickly in the in the finance world or in the accounting businesses, like it takes a lot to land your first full-time job in sports, but it's worth it. I mean, as a, you guys got to, as you got to see a glimpse of like, this is our office. Coming to a baseball field every day is my office and kind of getting a first 
hand seat behind home plate is an everyday luxury to me and there's a lot of cool things that go into it not to say that there's not a lot of hard work on long days that uh, kind of you have to go through but at the end of the day if you zoom out and see the big picture of everything that um, your job is coming to a baseball field every day being around professional athletes every day um, a lot of people would trade their careers to be where I'm at, so I'm very thankful. What an incredible experience. From WBLN, I'm Matthew Barturin. The NBA Finals tipped off last night with the Celtics taking Game 1 from the Warriors, 120-108. to The Warriors were winning by double digits in the beginning of the fourth quarter until Boston won on an 18-0 run to take the lead and win the game. That's our sports for today. It's been an awesome year, Wolverines. Now back to the guys at the desk. Thank you, Jake. Before we go, we'd like to congratulate Student Council President Eduardo Tito Garcia and Vice President Diego Suarez for being sworn into office this past Wednesday. The swearing took place in the dining hall at the Student Council Banquet. Congratulations. That's our show for today. And for the last time this year, from everyone here at WBLN, have a wonderful summer and like always, stay golden, Wolverines.